Look at the belly. It's so big. This is how it is at 35 weeks. Boop, 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 boop. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to talk about 34 to 35 weeks of my pregnancy. We're going to start off with all the baby updates and what's going on with my body. So right now at 34 weeks, the baby is the size of a cantaloupe. She's 17 and 3 fourths inches long and weighs four and 3 fourth pounds. Your baby can see her first color. It's red. Why red? That's the color of the inside of your uterus. So the cone cells for red develops first. And then tell your provider if you have numbness, tingling, or pain in your fingers, hand, or wrist because they can be signs of carpal tunnel. Your baby's fat layers, which will help regulate his body temperature once he's born, are filling him out, making him rounder. If your baby is born this week and you're nervous about preterm labor, you'll be happy to know that babies born between 34 and 37 weeks who have no other health problems generally do fine. So that is awesome. Fatigue and dizziness. And then itchy rashes. I don't have any itchy rashes, but if you do, then it could be a condition called pyritic urtercarial papules and plaques of pregnancy. Let's just stick to pup for short. And then call your caregiver if you have any signs of itchiness. And then at 35 weeks, the baby is the size of a honeydew melon. She's 18 and 1 4th inches and weighs 5 and 1 4th pounds. So at 35 weeks, your baby is ready to drop. It gives your lungs more room, putting more pressure on your bladder, which I don't know if I need any more pressure on my bladder because I'm already peeing like every 30 minutes and it's like little, just like tinkles of pee, not even a lot. And then it talks about needing to sleep and trying to figure out relaxation tips to sleep. By this time, your baby is floating in about a quart of amniotic fluid. It will now gradually decrease until you give birth. Her kidneys are fully developed and her liver can process some waste products. Most of her basic physical development is now complete. She'll spend the next few weeks putting on some weight. Heartburn and bloating and then clumsiness, which makes sense because your center of gravity is shifting now that your belly is so big. And then it talks about being bored in your third trimester, which I totally can relate to because now I'm just like, oh my gosh, I want baby to hurry up and get here so we can just have her here. But we still have a little bit of baking to do. So now that we've gone over that, let's go over everything that's been going on between 34 and 35 weeks of my pregnancy. At 34 weeks, I remember last week, or yeah, at 33 weeks, I mentioned how everything tasted really gross, but at 34 weeks, the nasty taste became really, really prominent and it tastes kind of like garlicky metal. I don't know, it's just so nasty. Like anytime I eat any type of meat, that's typically what I taste. And it's not as prominent when I'm eating something really sweet, but when it comes to meat or like just anything in general that isn't sweet, I can really taste that garlicky taste and I just don't understand like why this is happening but it's really really nasty and disturbing and it's making things really hard to eat especially when it comes to eggs oh my gosh eating eggs it like honestly makes me want to throw up but eggs are really good for you really good for the baby's brain development and I need to eat eggs so I've been trying to eat eggs but every time I eat the eggs it literally makes me want to throw up I also started getting pelvic pains and like random sharp pains all over my belly. And then the doctor said it was normal. The, um, the sharp pains are probably due to the round ligaments, which I didn't know were like everywhere, but she said it was normal for that to happen. And that it's due to just the baby growing a lot more now. So you feel a lot more pressure in your pelvic area and your stomach as it stretches. That was basically everything from 34 weeks. There wasn't much going on at that time because now that the baby's just growing, I feel like a lot of the stuff that's been going on is just pains and achiness and stuff like that. But at 34, or sorry, at 35 weeks, I went back to my um, MFM, which is the high risk specialist I've been seeing. And there was just like a lot of stuff going on that is very frustrating because I feel like my body is just kind of failing me because like so many things have been happening and then something else happened on top of that, which I'll go into. But at this point, like I just want her to be here because like 
so much stuff has been going on and it's so stressful that I feel like when she's here, I would, I can see her and know that she's healthy, but when she's inside my belly, I have no way of seeing her other than at the high risk specialist visits and like making sure that my placenta is working and my cord's working and like she's growing properly. So it's just a little frustrating and stressful having to do that every single week, but I don't mind it only because I know that the baby's okay, but every single week I feel like something else gets added on top of everything that's been going on and I'm just like, uh, I'm just ready for her to be here. So yeah, I went to the MFM and then good news is from the last growth scan, she was 10% and then she went up to 13%. So that was really good. But now her stomach is like super lagging behind compared to everything else. So because her stomach is still very behind, the doctor said that I was still falling under the category of being in growth restriction. So that just basically means like the baby isn't growing properly. It could be due to basically anything, but because my placenta and my umbilical cord, the blood flow, everything looks good. They think that maybe she just might be small. And then at that visit, we also found out that I have high amniotic fluid. So it's at the higher end of normal. So the cutoff for high amniotic fluid and for you to get diagnosed with polyhydramnios, polyhydramnios. I don't know how to say that word, but that basically means your amniotic fluid is really high and the cutoff to be diagnosed for that is 25 and mine was 24 and a half. So I'm literally there, but the, all the other previous scans, I've never had an issue with my amniotic fluid because they always check it. And then this past one that I went to, they checked it and it was on the higher end of normal, but not high enough to be diagnosed with that just yet. So I'm hoping the next scan it's fine. And then she said, typically this happens if the mother has diabetes. I do have gestational diabetes, so maybe that has something to do with that. Or it could be a chromosome disorder, but I've already done the blood work and the NST and everything came back normal. So she said not to worry about that. Or it could also be because the baby isn't like swallowing and filtering out the fluid properly. So that could also result in a high amniotic fluid. So I don't know if maybe the high amniotic fluid is making me look a lot bigger than I am because I have extra fluid in there, but that would explain why everything like suddenly became so heavy when the fluid got higher. So I don't know. I'm just hoping the next scan, it goes down so I don't have to worry about that because I've read about having high amniotic fluid and you trying to go and have the baby if the fluid's too high the baby can actually just float back up so she never like goes far down enough for you to be able to push her out and then it can result in a c-section i don't mind if i have to get a c-section but because i'm going to be induced if i don't have labor naturally i really don't want to be induced and then go through labor for like 24 hours just for the doctor to be like, all right, we need to do a C-section now. Like I wish I could just know like whether or not I just need the C-section and just go ahead and do that so I can like not need to go through induction and then to end up with a C-section. But because the baby grew from 10% to 13%, the doctor said she was willing to let the baby stay in there up until 38 to 39 weeks. So I'm doing another growth scan at 38 weeks and then depending on how that goes, I'll either have to give birth immediately the next day or they'll let her stay until 39 weeks and then I'll get induced at 39 weeks. So we'll see. I'm hoping she just comes naturally on her own because I just want to avoid the induction process. I've read like really great stories about induction and then I've also read really terrible stories of induction of people being in labor for like 36 hours and I'm like, oh my gosh. I really would prefer not to be in labor for 36 hours and then they end up getting a C-section. So yeah, I'm just hoping she comes naturally. I'm gonna try all the things I can do to get her to come here naturally and for me to get my water to break and then we can head to the hospital. At 34 weeks when I thought I was feeling pressure, like I feel like I shouldn't even have been complaining at that point because now at the end of 35 weeks, it's like pressure just constant throughout the entire day. Like in the morning, it's not too bad, but once I hit like one o'clock, it's like just pressure, 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 pressure all the way to the end of the day. So I don't know if maybe she's dropped or not. I can't really tell, 
but I'll let you guys decide. It literally feels like I have a basketball on my belly. I can still move pretty well like in the morning, but once like one o'clock hits, I'm like, oh my gosh, everything hurts. But people keep saying that I've dropped. I can't really tell if I've dropped or not. I feel like I've always carried her really low and people have been telling me that she's going to be here like a month and a half ago, but she's still in my belly. So I think I just carry her really low. So I really can't tell if I've dropped or not, but Yes, here is the belly for everyone who's been asking. And then speaking of stretch marks, here is what it looks like. They've gone all the way back here now. But yeah, they're all right here. This side I feel like isn't as bad. And then there's the front. The bottom of my belly literally looks like a watermelon because there's so many stripes on it. And then here's this side. They're kind of itchy sometimes, but as long as I put lotion and oil on it, it it's fine. But yeah, there's my stretchy marks. That was basically everything from 34 to 35 weeks. I can't believe I am so close to the end now. I feel like I've been pregnant for literally eternity, but I am just like so excited. We finally have everything ready. The other day we did have a water break scare because I thought I was leaking. And then this was like at 1150 at night too. And we were like, oh my gosh, like my hospital bag wasn't even packed yet. And I need to get that done because at any point now, if anything were to happen, we needed to be ready to go. And then my husband was trying to pack the bag while I was just laying in bed trying to see if more water was coming out. And then he was just like, what does the baby need? What does the baby need? What do we need to get? And I'm just like, okay, let me, let me pull up the list and we'll just bring everything. But luckily that wasn't it. The doctor says if you fill up a pad within one hour, then that probably is your water leaking, but that didn't happen, so false alarm but it was very funny but also very nerve-wracking because we were just like oh my gosh is she coming now like are we gonna have a baby tomorrow but no so we'll see how much longer we she stays in there now <laughs> so i hope you guys like this video and i'll see y'all in my next one bye